Hi everyone and welcome. I'm John Gaho, the Director of Studies at Thika College of Banki. Uh, I am going to discuss about the VET systems in Kenya. And uh, here in Kenya, for one to get to college or to university, the VET system starts like this. One starts from nursery school, you study for one year, you go to primary school, you study for eight years, then from there you go to secondary school, you study for four years, and then after secondary school, you go to either college, college uh, you take either three years, two years, or if you don't go to college, you go to university, where you take a three and a half to four years, depending on the course that you are doing. On matters colleges, we are regulated by Tibeta, which also registers other institutions of higher learning, other than the universities. The university, they are regulated by another government institution. For more information about Tibeta, because the information is very wide, you can go online and visit www.tveta. Tveta, that is T-V-E-T-A. I repeat, www.tveta.go.ke. And there you will have a detailed information on the VET systems in Kenya under the Tibeta institution, that is the Tibeta government institution. In college, one can join for ADSAN courses, one can also join for uh, certificate courses, or you can join for diploma courses or even higher diploma courses. This is dependent on the grade that you gain when you are doing your full four exam, that is a secondary uh, examination. If you got a very low grade, for example, from uh, D minus and below, you start from the ADSAN level, you got from D to uh, around D plus, you, you, you enroll for certificate level, what you call craft certificate level. If you manage to gain a C, a mean grade of C minus and above, you do a diploma level. And then after diploma, you do a higher diploma. Higher diploma, you must first of all do a diploma course. That is all about VET systems in our country. Okay. Now, about Thika College of Banking, uh, I can now talk about the curriculum in our institution. And uh, in Thika College of Banking, we have three levels. One, we have the artisan level. Two, we have the certificate level. And three, we have the, the diploma level. In each and every level, you have a curriculum. And for artisan level, which takes a minimum of six months, this level, we have its own curriculum. We go to certificate level, which takes a minimum of one year. They also have its own curriculum and also the diploma level. In whichever course, takes a minimum of two years. So that is, in general, the curriculum of uh, these three levels in whichever course that you do. Each course operates independently and follows a laid course outline. What do I mean? In every course, there must be a course outline. And the course outline is derived from the syllabus of the course that you are doing. So each and every course, be it in art and level, be it in craft certificate level, or be it in diploma level, you must have that detailed course outline that uh, gives you all the information about what shall be covered in that particular course. And finally, we have three exam bodies in this college. The first one, we call it ICM, that is Institute of Commercial Management. It is an international examination body registered by Tibeta, the one I said it's a government institution that governs or that regulates the colleges. ICM, that is the first examination body. Two, we have NITA, N-I-T-A, NITA, we call it National Industrial Training Authority. This is a government exam body that examines the technical courses. For example, those students who are doing uh, cosmetology, you heard it from one of our colleagues talking about the courses that you offer. We have a course like plumbing, uh, that course is also examined by NITA. And finally, we have NEC, that is Kenya National Examination Council. This is one of the major examining bodies that examines most of the courses here in Kenya. That is what I have to say 
about the fed systems in Kenya and also about the curriculum in our college. If you need more information regarding what I've talked about curriculum in our college, you can visit our website www.thinkercollegebanking.ac.ke Also, if you need more information about Stiveta, I've told you you can visit www.stiveta.com how are you everyone? Ah, uh, my name is Julius Monte Kahara, and my name is Street Logistics College of Banking and Accountants, Accountancy, which has been there for the last 24 years. And having been there when the, co the college was started, I think I'm the best place person to give the information about the college and a brief history thereof. Just a small background of myself, I'm a former banker, having worked with one of the major international banks, that's Barclays Bank of Kenya Limited, and uh, I had to feel that I could go and start my own college, and that's why I left a very high, high paying job to come and found the college. That was back in 1997, when we started preparing to open the college, and by 1990, January, we were already visiting with the first batch of students. Since then, the college has grown in bounds with expansion going in the span of years with very many students, the number of courses. And right now, we've got quite a big number of former students who are working in various industries of the Kenyan economy. It's only recently when we moved to a new premises. We had to spend a lot of money to build the construct our place, but because we used to be at the end of pre uh, we invented the premises. That's why now we're looking forward to a very big expansion because we could use that capacity. About the cooperation with the European Union, we are very grateful because actually we now broadened our horizons to learn more about our other countries and their training vets and how they go about their thing and most of the European countries who at least we know are better at fun than ourselves. In that respect we are very grateful that at least we've been given a chance to be a part of the cooperation program with other African countries and the European Union. We are also looking forward to you lecture program and uh, more so the one which is to take this year to take place this year in about May, June, July and August around there where our students will come to Europe and learn more about how they do things in Europe and on the other hand we have European, Europeans coming to our country to learn more about how we go about it. This is the only way we can expand and synchronize the way things are done globally because as you know today it's living in a global village. We know what the Europeans are doing, we know what the West Africans are doing, we know what the South Africans are doing, and most important, what the whole world is doing in terms of vets. Now, I need to make a small announcement. I may look young, but I celebrated my 61st birthday last September, and now I may be thinking of retiring, and leave my very able principal pastor down to be hard to handle the college full management and also to handle the European step of a step program. In that respect, I'm very grateful to have talked to you and tell you something small about the College of Banking. You learn more about it from our people from my people, that is Mr. Gaho and other members of staff. And thank you so much. And more so to Elena and her team who have really assisted us and taught us how to handle paperwork in this state of, of, uh, of a step program. Having given a brief history of the college, now I feel I'm, I'm, I'm competent enough to tell you about the, the, the courses we offer at Thika College of Banking. Thika College of Banking. And uh, as I've already mentioned, um, the fraud and our data inception and the idea was mine. So uh, it's my brainchild. So initially, we were poised to start with banking courses, accountancy, 
and generally information technology. That time you just call them study computer studies. And hence the name of Vika College of Banking, Accountancy and Computer Studies. But later on, due to the demands of the market, the college diversified to other courses like sales and marketing, catering and hotel management, business management, just to mention but a few. Later on, we decided that again due to the demand of the market, that technical courses have become the ideal thing in our Kenyan economy. That is, very many constructions are coming up, and as we need to train electricians, building contractors, plumbers, and everything else. You will be surprised to know that in Kenya to get a plumber, it is a really, really, really big problem, and that's why we found that gap in the market and decided that we need to go to offer such courses. In that respect, now we are embarking on a very major expansion plan, having, as already mentioned, having a lot of space where you can have even more mechanical training for mechanical vehicle artisans. That is, since in Kenya we are having very many important old vehicles from Japan, China, Dubai, and everyone else, which break down every now and then. So we need at least to train mechanics who can be doing that. So in that expansion, at least we would expect that at least with the assistance of people like the European Union, we will be in a position to achieve that goal. Thank you. Definitely as you know, Kenya, in Kenya, one of our major foreign exchange earners is tourism, with major hotels and most so at the coast. At that's why we feel that we are the need to train caterers and hospitality people to be responsible in that particular industry. Most of you who have come to our country and gone to Mombasa have seen that you've got an influx of very major hotels and most of them require very well-trained members of staff, that's chefs, waiters, and all that, kind of, all that sort of people to be adding their clients from all over the world. Yeah, in that respect, we are also planning to have our own establishment where we will be training our own students, although we still train them in our classrooms and in, the, in their practical classes where you've got a model restaurant where they do their practicals. Now we need to introduce them to the outside the world through our own establishment where we will have a be serving real people, where we'll be having real clients and everything else, and even something to do with hospitality in the hotel rooms and hotel rooms and everything else. Yeah. As I've already mentioned from the brief history, we used to operate from landed families, and hence expansion was a real constraint. Now our major challenge has been for the last five years to construct our own place, which we've done, we've got a five-story building, and have put all our resources into that aspect. Having done that, you would be surprised to know that at least have, you, that we may not have, be having enough resources to buy the equipment we need for most of our courses like catering and hotel management, all the engines for the market, mechanical artisans, practical materials for ground bars and building materials for, for those who are, who are doing, doing building construction. So those are the main challenges, but having done now completed uh, the building, now we have more concentration on buying those equipments in respect to at least to see that at least we modernize what our students are doing. I may have forgot to mention that we also have got media and journalism classes, and you'll be surprised and then infuse to you that all this video has been, been taken, it's been taken by one of our students in India with the influx of the very, very many media houses in our economy, in our country, we feel that at least we need to train journalists, media people, radio presenters, TV anchors, and even readers at least to see that at least we also play a part in the expansion of that industry. We've done a very beautiful studio, although it still needs to be equipped, and that's where we still look for the benefits of our benefactor under the European Union 
you can assist us at least try and equip all those laboratories. But the other challenge may have been the COVID-19, which has been a group of problem. We never had it. we couldn't do anything about it. Nobody could have done anything about it. Even the strongest countries in the other, the USA, was overwhelmed by the same. So there's that downturn because of the COVID-19, the economic downturn, because of the political of the political instability in our country. Like now, you know, we are preparing for elections in August, and there's a lot of hype about the Whatever you always go through in uh, to try for and maybe there, but we are hoping for the best and praying God that such things may not happen and has happened a decade, has happened a decade ago. The other main challenge is uh, that the economic downturn has also affected our, our students' ability to pay fees. Their parents have really had problems trying to pay fees for their students for their daughters and sons, and in that respect, you are being forced most of the time at to give bursaries and subsidized fees to most of our students because their parents are unable to pay the various amount that we accepted to give them for institutions. But then, since we are committed to give very poor institution, we are still trying to source for people who can source our students, and if the European Union or any other benefactor, or any other NGO would feel touched to come and at least assist our students at least go through their courses without much hazards would be very, very, very brief. Oh, definitely, again, due to the economic downturn and the COVID-19, uh, the industries like the hotel industry have freely also have had challenges and so they are even shedding off most of their employees. That's the area where we mostly used to take our students for attachment or even get employment for them in the, that in, in, in say the last five years, but recently we are having challenges having to attach our students to the industry. That's why again we look forward to, to our partners in our state to see how they can assist us. Who, that uh, get attachments for our students, even if it's in Europe, everywhere else, and most important because they broaden their knowledge in their various areas and in, in different setups like the European countries. My name is Rose Wamboi Mwangi, administrator of the College of Bank Union. Uh, in the College of Bank Union, we have eight full time staff, four part time staff. In the Department of Hospitality and Tourism, we have two tutors. The rest cater other departments. Our lecturers are hired full time, and one has to be approved by TVETA to qualify to teach in our college here in Kenya. Our teachers are taken to workshop and education tours so that they can be able to deliver good quality in our college. We are located at a place called Yatito in our own building called the Skerosi Powers. In the college of banking, being a middle level college, uh, is meant to provide technical courses and one of the major courses that we offer is food and beverage production, sales and service. And my name is Mr. Wanjomi, I'm the lecturer in uh, hospitality and tourism department. And my concern based on first, I would like to emphasize much on the locality based on the cuisines that we offer. And Chambu County is one of the regions where we learn much on various types of cuisines and we made our moves in our training in ensuring that we offer various cuisines that will be able to locally cater for the people who live in Kiambu. The biggest tribe in Kiambu is the Kikuyu. And to give you a brief history of the Kikuyu, being the biggest tribe in the county, they don't match on the localities. And some of the food they offer are those varieties of food items that caters for all demographic related uh, 
categories. And when I'm talking of demographic related categories, I'm talking of we see it catering for people based on age, for people based on sex, people based on status, people based on occupation. And being a business located area as well, we see people who are aged and we categorize much on foods that caters for those people who are aged, bearing in mind we are also considering on their health status. Most of them they suffer for diabetes, most of them are suffering for uh, depression, most of them are suffering for hypertension, and most of the local dishes that we offer, which are more of traditional dishes, they include the arms, the arrowroots, the cereals like maize, cereals like sorghum, so that they can be able to cater for their health condition. For now, we don't dwell much on uh, more of <coughs> the dishes that cannot be able to sustain their uh, uh, the uh, health status. So we are just welcoming you to the history of Kiambu on matters concerning food. We are now modernizing towards uh, towards uh, towards hospitality and tourism where we are receiving quite several of external business-oriented people in the region. And this is now taking us to the next level of embracing both training, even to our students, on various local cuisines and also international cuisines. Because most of the investors are more external. Most of them They've come from outside the country. We've seen them traveling all the way from Europe, and that's why we are very much interested in capturing and trying to integrate the local, our local cuisines and the European cuisines. And it is our own pressure if we can be able to have most of the great investors from Europe and from the history even in our training, we know that we are majoring most with European cuisines. Just to mention a few, we have France, we have Spain, we have Italy among others. And that is where we are committing ourselves most in our training because we believe in our students being aware of the origin of the training in catering coming from European. On my conclusion, I would like to talk on behalf of a lecture in hospitality and tourism in Liga College of Banking on matters concerning economic sector in tourism and hospitality. I can as well say that tourism growth in Kiambu County has really contributed to almost 60 to 65 percent on our economic growth as well. If we can be able to carry out a case study that we shall be able to demonstrate, we've seen the growth of hospitality and tourism that has really encouraged the growth of hotels and restaurants which are in modern, uh, in modern uh, sector have really contributed to the growth of our infrastructure, hence creating a lot of employment to our youth. And this has contributed almost 60 to 65 percent of the growth in our economy. And we are hoping that we shall still continue receiving great investors from Europe, great investors from Asia, Italy, Spain, among other countries, so that they can be able, with our resources that we have in our region, to continue seeing total vibration of growth in the hotel sector, in tourism sector, so that we can see our youth as they train to continue uh, getting these jobs and
continue improving their life in future. Thank you. I must learn to ask. Take a banking, take a college of banking and accountancy, pursue a diploma in lettering and debt management. I'm a Kenyan from no community. In no community, according to our traditions and customs, we usually consume seafoods. And I would like to take you through one of the seafoods, which is fish. So before preparing fish, that is roasted fish, you have some of the items you have to prepare first. So you must have four tilapia fish fillets, then cooking oil of your choice, salt, white pepper and lemon wedges. First you have to to heat the oven at 400 degrees Celsius. Drizzle fish with cooking oil, sprinkle with salt and white pepper, then place the fish on a green baking sheet, roast, roast fish for 10 minutes until it is until it is okay and tender. And the dish is ready to be served. I'm Diana from Dika College of Banking, pursuing diploma in hospitality management. I'll be taking you through a very common dish known as Gideri. Gideri, another name for Gideri is Mudere, is a traditional meal taken by Kenyans. Um, Gideri is comprised of maize and legumes. Uh, examples of legumes such as beans, any type of bean, which are placed in a cooking pot, then you put water and then you let it to boil until it's ready to cook to eat. Kiteri is the staple food for Kikuyu people, they are Meru and also they are Mbele people. It is commonly taken also in the most communities such as Kama in the eastern region. And Gideri is also served, it can also be served as a stew by a combination of potatoes and bananas. I'm Taki Mizuno, a student from Rika Baking College of Expressing Certificate in Production. I'm Gideri from Kisi Community. I will be taking through a common dish known as matoke. Matoke is the best part about this dish in food. I can serve it in, in, on, the, on this bowl. Serve it up with food, bread, chapati, rice and bread. But I like to make men with meat, beef for with a thin, rich sauce. This is a simple and hard, hard matake also, as well as matake, cooking bananas. It's a staple food in Eastern Africa made from green bananas. And if, if you love stewed beef potatoes, you will love this recipe. Make it matoko for that minutes to become fork then. To make several ways, to make several ways to become a dog, boiled stew, mast, roast, or a feed with the sauce made from, from red hot chili. Hi, my name is Afinia I'm a 
starts here with the project of banking and accountancy here in Kenya. Today I'll be talking about local languages and dialects. Here in Kenya we have so many languages. For example, we have Luo, we have Nero, we have Tukuyus, we have Kambas, and Kalijians, and many others. On top of that, we have our two main languages, that is Swahili and English. Swahili, which is our national language, and English, which is our official language. If it happens to use our country, Kenya, the main, the main used language is Swahili. And if it happens to visit our offices here in Kenya, the main languages that we require to use, the main language that we require to use is English, which is our official language. Uh, also, if you need to know more about our country, Kenya, maybe you want to know the tourist sites that you can be able to visit or maybe you want to have more detailed information about our nation Kenya or our country Kenya you can go to YouTube search these words Kenya is a country Kenya is a country you're going to get a number of documentaries talking about Kenya if you want to know about uh, the hospitality industry in Kenya for example if you need to know anything to do with tourism you can go to YouTube search, for example, Masai Mara National Park. Masai Mara National Park. Also, you can search for Nairobi National Park. Also, you can search for Ministry of Tourism, Kenya. Ministry of Tourism, Kenya. You'll get more and enough information that you need about our country. Thank you very much. And uh, we welcome you all from Europe to come here in Kenya and in particular pick up all your banking and we'll take you through all what we do here and if time allows we'll take you through our country. Okay.